Hello, and welcome to this Access NI presentation in which we provide information, including examples, on the type of criminal history information that could be included on an Access NI check, including conviction information, police information, and barred list information. As mentioned in other sessions, the information disclosed on a certificate will often depend upon the level of check being sought, with most information likely to be disclosed on an enhanced check. At this stage, I thought it useful just to provide a little information about the types of disposals that can be disclosed. Convictions are the disposal handed out when an offence is tried in a court and the individual is found guilty. Spent convictions are not disclosed on basic checks. A caution is a warning about future conduct given by a senior police officer at the direction of the Public Prosecution Service. The individual must admit the offence before the caution can be given. Cautions are not disclosed on basic checks as they are automatically spent. Cautions remain on standard and enhanced checks for six years for adults and two years for under 18s, unless they are for a specified offence. Informed warnings are delivered by police as an alternative to taking the offender to court. Again, they are only disclosed on standard and enhanced checks for a period of one year following the date of the warning. If information exists, it is added to the disclosure certificate under the relevant heading, with convictions added first, any cautions and informed warnings are added under the non-court disposals heading, with additional police information and barred information added as appropriate. Here's a few examples of the type of wording used when a conviction is included on a certificate. Convictions are listed in order of the court date with earliest first. You'll note that for each conviction, the court date and court venue are recorded first, followed by the offence that the individual was charged with, and finally the court disposal. In this first example, you will see the individual's case was heard at Downpatrick Magistrates Court on the 11th of October 2018. The offence was taking part in an unlawful public procession and the court handed out a two-year conditional discharge. The second example is a case heard at Laganside Magistrates Court on the 12th of April 2012. The offence was fraud by false representation, which incurred a three-month prison sentence. Finally, this third example shows two offences heard at Jersey Magistrates Court on the 21st of November 2019. The offences were a foreign legislation theft shoplifting, which resulted in a £100 fine and assault on police, for which the offender received 180 hours community service order. In terms of interpreting the nature of convictions on a certificate, it is often the case that the descriptor or charge used for the offence can indicate the seriousness or severity of the offence. If we take the offence of assault, we can see at its lower end the charge might be common assault. In this instance, police might conclude that no one has been badly hurt as a result of the incident and any injuries incurred are likely to be minor in nature. If the assault is more severe with injuries resulting in minor cuts and bruising, then the charge might be assault occasioning actually bodily harm. At the most severe end, grievous bodily harm might be the offence when the incident has resulted in someone getting badly hurt, with perhaps broken bones and severe cuts requiring stitches, etc. In addition, it is worth noting that the manner of the court disposal is often an indicator of the seriousness or severity with which the court viewed the offence. For example, for a less severe offence, the court might order an absolute or conditional discharge or for the offender to be bound over. The court might order a fine or a community service for a more severe offence 
or for the most serious offences, the court might choose to order a period of imprisonment or a suspended sentence. The following are examples of how non-court disposals would appear on a disclosure certificate. They are also known as diversionary disposals and include cautions, informed warnings and diversionary youth conferences used by the Youth Justice Agency. In this example, we can see that the individual received a Northern Ireland Youth Caution on the 14th of March 2022 at a PSNI station for the offence of possession of an offensive weapon in a public place. In this second example, we can see an adult caution delivered by PSNI for two offences, namely possession of a Class A controlled drug and indecent behaviour. I'd like to move on now to talk about police information that might be added to an enhanced disclosure. Police information is information held on police systems that the police force considers is relevant for the role and ought to be disclosed. Access and I forwards approximately 26% of all enhanced checks to police forces throughout the UK, although predominantly PSNI. So that the force can consider the disclosure of information they hold in the interests of wider safeguarding. This police information is sometimes referred to as non conviction information or soft intelligence. There are primarily two documents that guide the disclosure of police information. The first of these is the Quality Assurance Framework or QAF. This is the prescribed decision making framework agreed by the Association of Chief Police Officers for the processing, consideration and disclosure of police information for enhanced checks. QAF was developed following the publication of the Bichard Report in 2004, in particular Recommendation 20. QAF has been amended over time to reflect both Part 5 of the Police Act and the direction of courts following consideration of challenges to information included on disclosures. The objective of QAF is to deliver a standard process and audit trail across all police disclosure units in the UK when considering information for disclosure in accordance with Section 113B4 of the Police Act. QAF is the agreed standard for decision making, risk management, relevance considerations and audit trail provision. The second primary document to be referenced by police forces is the statutory disclosure guidance for chief officers. This is a document produced and published by the Department of Justice and sets out the eight key principles to be applied in consideration of police information. Namely, there should be no presumption in favour or against any item of information. Information should be relevant to the role the individual will be undertaking. The information ought to be disclosed so that the employer can consider this in taking the recruitment decision. The police force can offer representations to the individual to understand their perspective prior to deciding whether to disclose or not. The force must maintain a clear decision making audit trail. Wherever possible, decisions should be made in a timely manner. Police force information should be provided in a meaningful and consistent manner and the delegation from the chief officer must be fully documented. The types of information that police might disclose can be grouped into three classifications. Police can provide clarification or further information about convictions or non-court disposals on an individual's criminal record. Police can provide further relevant information about the applicant or police can provide information relating to an individual other than the applicant. This would ordinarily be the case for applicants undertaking regulated activity in their own home, for example, fostering, childminding or adoption. 
In the following slides, we're going to look at each of these classifications in more detail, providing examples of the type of information that police might disclose. The first of these classifications is the provision of clarification or further information by police relating to convictions or non-court disposals on the individual's criminal record. This could include explanatory information that police believe will provide context to a conviction or caution, to assist employers to understand the background nature of an offence, with the intention of helping ensure safer and more informed recruitment decisions. An example of this explanatory information might read something like that displayed on screen. Here we can see that the applicant has a conviction for indecent behaviour and police have provided further information providing context that this relates to urinating in a public place. Police have disclosed this to explain the circumstances behind the applicant's conviction. Police have added that they have disclosed this information as they believe it is relevant and important that the employer takes it into account in considering whether or not to recruit the individual. Another example of police explanatory information is as displayed on screen. Here we can see that the applicant has a conviction for aggravated assault on a female or boy under 14 years. Conscious that this could be interpreted as a sexual assault, perhaps on a child, police have provided further contextual information clarifying that the assault was on a 25 year old female. In order to make sense of this, you will need to refer to the applicant's gender and age at the time of the assault. Police's expectation in providing this additional information is that you will conclude in this instance that the conviction related to an altercation involving two adult females. The second classification of police information is in relation to relevant information about the applicant. This encompasses a wide range of police information that does not necessarily relate to conviction information. For the purposes of working through this classification, we have broken it down into six clusters, which are information about ongoing police investigations, convictions from EU countries, convictions of offences in the Republic of Ireland, information relating to no prosecutions or not guilty verdicts, details about previous investigations where the applicant was a suspect, and clarification about offences where the police information may be negative for the applicant. The first of these clusters is information in relation to an ongoing police investigation. An example of such a disclosure is displayed on screen. In this type of disclosure, police may share information indicating that the individual is currently under investigation for specific offences and that they are awaiting direction from the PPS. In these circumstances, it is likely that the applicant will know about this as they will have been charged by police. The police will only share this information if it is relevant for the role. For example, for offences such as distributing indecent images or pseudo photographs of children. It is also possible that the police might have an ongoing investigation in, of which the applicant is unaware. Police might want this to remain the case until they progress the investigation to the point where they can bring charges. As such, they may not want to include the relevant details on the disclosure certificate for fear of compromising the investigation. In such circumstances, and in the interests of safeguarding, police might contact the employer or voluntary group directly in order to provide a common law police disclosure. The second of these clusters is information that has been provided by one of 15 EU countries that Access&I make referrals to 
if that country is the applicant's country of origin and they are seeking to work with children in Northern Ireland. These referrals are facilitated by ACRO and a disclosure might read something like that displayed on screen. In this instance, only conviction information is disclosed. The example on screen shows a conviction for fraud from a circuit court in Germany that resulted in a suspended prison sentence. Cluster 3 relates to information received from Angarda Shiakana. Access and I refer cases to the Garda if the applicant lives in the Republic of Ireland or has done so in the last five years. Referrals are facilitated through existing arrangements in place between the PSNI and the Garda for the exchange of information in the interests of safeguarding. If the Garda has information to share, they will provide this to PSNI, who will then forward to Access NI for inclusion on the enhanced certificate. An example of a Garda disclosure is as displayed on screen. Again, and like the EU disclosures, only conviction information is disclosed here, including details of the court name and date, along with the offences and the court disposals. Examples of such information might read like those displayed on screen. Here the individual has two convictions, one from Dundalk Magistrates in 2017 when a 60-hour community service order was handed down, and another from Galway Circuit Court when a three-month suspended sentence was ordered for theft. The fourth cluster of police information relates to information about police investigations that resulted in a no prosecution or a not guilty verdict. An example of this is as displayed on screen. Here, police are disclosing that the applicant made an admission of an offence. However, and based on mitigating circumstances, the PPS have directed a no prosecution. A specific police disclosure in this regard might read like that highlighted example where the applicant has admitted using their uncle's money for their own gain. The applicant's uncle was suffering from dementia and the applicant had power of attorney over the uncle's finances. The applicant's family withdrew their complaints after the applicant admitted responsibility for the missing money and PPS directed no prosecution. Again, Police might disclose such information to allow the employer to consider the relevance as part of a recruitment process. The fifth cluster of police information relates to previous investigations where the applicant was regarded as a suspect. An example of this is as displayed on screen. Here, police are disclosing that the applicant has been linked as a suspect to perhaps a number of incidents where offences were committed. As police must consider the information they hold to be relevant to the role applied for, an example of the specific disclosure in this regard might read as highlighted on screen, where police might disclose that between two specific dates, the applicant was linked as a suspect in a number of incidents involving inappropriate sexual behaviour towards other vulnerable adults within the applicant's peer group. The final cluster is information disclosed by police about convictions on the applicant's criminal record, where the additional context provided by police might have a negative outcome for the applicant. The disclosure might look something like that displayed on screen, where police will provide details of the specific circumstances pertaining to the offences. In the highlighted example here, you can see that police have referenced two cautions on the applicant's criminal record for theft by an employee and possession of Class B and C controlled drugs. The key information that police go on to share in this example is that the offences related to the applicant taking drugs from a medicine cabinet in a care unit where they were working. This additional information paints a wholly different picture and might impact on the recruitment decision if, for example, the enhanced check was being sought as the applicant was seeking to work in a residential care home. 
Again, should police choose to disclose such information, they do so in the interests of safeguarding. The third classification of police information is information relating to an individual who is not the applicant. This is known as third party information, where the information is disclosed for applications where the activities are based in the applicant's home address, for example, adoption, fostering or childminding. In all such instances, these cases are referred to PSNI to undertake a wider search on the home address. Given the more involved nature of these police searches, they can take more time to complete. Again, police will disclose such information as considered appropriate in the interests of wider public safety. An example of this third party information might read as per the detail on screen. Here we can see that police are noting that they hold no relevant information about the applicant, but they do hold information about a relative who appears to be living at the applicant's home. In such circumstances, police will then provide details of the relevant information they hold about this third party. A specific example of this police disclosure might look something like that highlighted on screen, where police have disclosed details where the third party has been linked to numerous domestic incidents which have been reported to police, which include common assault and criminal damage which resulted in a caution. In a second example of this type of police disclosure, we have a third party who may have access to the applicant's home address, for example, perhaps a regular visitor. In this instance, police consider it important that the details of the third party's criminal record, along with details of current investigations, are disclosed. In specific terms, this might read like the example highlighted on screen, where police indicate that the third party has numerous convictions, including for arson, assault, drug supply, extortion and other violent offences. Police also disclose that the named third party is under investigation after admitting making and possessing indecent images of children. In these types of disclosure, police are extremely mindful of the sensitive nature of this information. It might well be the case that the applicant might not be aware of the police information uh, about the third party, and this could come as quite a surprise to them. In all such instances, police must balance the need to protect the vulnerable in our society against the rights of the individual whose information they are considering for disclosure, and police will only ever disclose where there is considered to be a pressing public protection need to do so. Moving on now to talk about disclosure from the barred lists. There are four separate barred lists maintained in the UK. The Disclosure and Barring Service maintained two lists for those barred from working with adults and or children for England, Wales and Northern Ireland, and the Scottish Government maintain their own two adults and children's barred lists. Access and I search these lists as appropriate when processing enhanced checks for those working or volunteering in regulated activity. If the applicant is included on the children's barred list, this form of words will be included on the disclosure certificate. If the applicant is on the adults barred list, then this form of words will be included on the disclosure. There are some 90,000 people on the DBS barred lists, with a significant proportion on both lists. If they are included on both lists and a search of both lists is required for the role they're seeking to undertake, then both barred list messages will be included on the disclosure certificate. The final area I'd like to cover in this session is the guidance issued by the Northern Ireland Executive on the treatment of conflict-related convictions for employment purposes. It is estimated that some 30,000 people spent time in prison as a result of the conflict in Northern Ireland. In 2012, the Executive Office published employer's guidance entitled Recruiting People with Conflict-Related Convictions. The basic principle of this guidance is that any conviction for a conflict-related offence 
that predates the Good Friday Agreement should not be taken into account unless it is materially relevant to the employment being sought. The full guidance is available on the Executive Office website. That concludes this presentation. We hope you find it useful and informative. If you have any questions about the information provided during this presentation, please do not hesitate to contact us at the email address provided on screen. Thank you.